And joining me now is Kellyanne Conway, counselor to President Trump. Kellyanne, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you, Chad. Uh, I want to start with something that Senator Graham said on Friday on CNN. Take a listen. President Trump could stop this policy with a phone call. He doesn't seem to acknowledge that. Well, well he can't. I'll go tell him. If you don't like families being separated, you can tell DHS stop doing it. Um, is the president ready to make that phone call to the attorney general, to DHS, to stop this policy? The president is ready to get meaningful immigration reform across the board. And Chuck, let me just tell you that nobody likes seeing babies ripped from their mother's arms, uh, from their mother's wombs, frankly. But we have to make sure that DHS's laws are understood through the soundbite culture that we live in. There are three circumstances by which DHS evaluates a child at the border. One is, does this child actually have a custodial or familiar relationship with the adult? Mm -hmm. And number two, is the child in any danger? And plenty have been over time. Some adults are using children to great, gain access to the border. And number three, is the adult subject to criminal prosecution? This is a vexing problem that both Presidents Bush and President Obama faced as well. Um, Secretary of DHS under President Obama told the New York Times this weekend that this was the bane of his existence for three years. He was describing the fact that they had to detain families in these large facilities um, for a very long periods of time. Why? Because in the summer of 2014, we saw this surge, particularly from Central America, uh, tens of thousands, if not more, uh, unaccompanied minors coming to the border and trying to gain entry. Chuck, I've got a teenage daughter, you have a teenage daughter. Can we say with a straight face today that we know what happened to all those teenage girls? Very left-leaning journalists at the time from Politico, from HuffPo, Jorge Ramos did a segment about the fact that these girls faced almost certain rape, trying to make that journey northward. Many of them were getting, many of them were getting um, vaccinated, or I guess they were getting shots for birth control because it was almost certain. This is a perilous journey for many of these children. And if people really cared about them, we would figure out a way to get the funding, to expand the centers, and to close the loopholes. These loopholes are allowing uh, open border policies. If the, I think what the president is saying is if the Democrats are serious, they'll come together again and try to close these loopholes and get real immigration reform. So it sounds like, and this is going to sound harsh, but it sounds like you're holding these kids hostage. No. To get the Democrats to the table to pass some law. You just no. laid out a very well, compassionate case for why. That. I understand. You just laid out a very, compa with a lot of compassion and a lot of empathy in there. But it's not very empathetic. That the, the most traumatic thing to do to a kid, separate them from their parents once they've made that traumatic journey. Why do that right now? I understand we have an immigration debate going on in this country. Why use these kids as leverage? Well, I certainly don't want anybody to use these kids as leverage. I saw a headline that uh, breathlessly screamed as much, and I object to that very forcefully. Let me say this. These children that are in, in fairness, HHS. by the way, it was a White House official that told the Washington Post. Yeah, I'd like Post, to know who that is, by the way. The thinking in the building is to force the the people way, to the table. By the way, I want that person to say it to my face. I really do. I'll meet them at the White House today because I think that's a disgrace. Should that I want them person to be forward. fired? Should that person want, be fired? That, fire, that person should have the guts to come forward and put their name to that quote. How's that? Number two, and most importantly, these children are handed over to HHS. Why? Because that is Health and Human Services. So that they can be put into facilities like El Cajon, where there was a report recently where there are boys ages 6 to 17 who are all there. They have the necessary medications, obviously food and shelter. They have exercise. They have education during the day. I don't, and, like, nobody's doubting that and they're, let's getting, get them back they're, together. they're getting reasonable care there. The question is, the most well, traumatic are. thing to do is, is taking them away I agree. in and the, by the first way, that's place. Why you don't have to. And Chuck, that's you don't why, have to be doing this. But that happens in this country as well. In other words, if I commit a crime and I am put in jail, my four children are separated from their mother because we don't have a policy. Or why would you want the children in jail with their parents? You want them in a facility temporarily or you want them to be repatriated back to the home country with said parent, or you want them to come into this country with a responsible adult who you know, who the authorities are confident, means that child no harm, won't get them in an MS-13 gang, won't subject them to trafficking or rape, or worse. You want them to go with a, a family member or another a close family friend who would be a custodian. And so this has been a vexing problem for many years. I would tell everybody this, this week when the president goes to Congress at 5.30 on Tuesday, mm -hmm. get together. Chuck, I don't remember a single Democrat. I could be mistaken. Maybe one murmured it. But in the one hour meeting back in January in the cabinet room where the president invited 
senators and, and congressmen from the Republicans and the Democratic parties to the cabinet room. I, I believe that your, your cable station covered it live sure. and in full. One hour. Did this issue come up? The Democrats only want to talk about DACA, the Dreamers. Why aren't they mentioning this? But, but in fairness, uh, kids weren't being separated from their parents then. This policy they got implemented in April. This policy got implemented in April. The zero tolerance policy, where every migrant, yes. every asylum seeker is treated as a criminal. And that, well, they are they are First. subject to criminal prosecution. They that is an it, April it, change. So why would they bring it up? It's adjudicated. Jail? It's adjudicated. What they should have said is, look, we had a surge over the border in 2014, Mr. President, under mm -hmm. President Obama, and it it shocked everyone, and we simply didn't have the capacity. We want to avoid that in the future and work with you. Look, the Democrats ought to just own it. Why don't they say we're for open borders? But they have to be serious. Look. Uh, over time, over if you extrapolate the money that is spent on each of these unaccompanied minors right now at the border, you're talking about DHS statistics, $35,000 per child. I think that's great, but we have 18 million American children right now as we sit here in households that make less than $35,000. But as you know, this is, this is a question of morality. This is a question of American you've heard morality. Me, you've heard me weigh in on that. I did. This is a question of American morality. As a morality. mother, as a Catholic, as somebody who has got a conscience and wouldn't say the junk that somebody said. Uh, apparently, allegedly, I will tell you that nobody likes this policy. You saw the president on camera that he wants this to end, but everybody has Congress he has can to act. end it Congress, on his own. Chuck, Congress passed a law that it is a crime. This is a congressional law from many years ago. Many it is years. a crime to enter this country illegally. So if they don't like that law, they should change it. If they don't like the, you the can fact keep that the families together. Why can't you find a way to still Do you potentially want the child in jail? You, you as keep the families a together. Why don't you create a family detention center? Well, we had those under President Obama, but the Democrats are holding up the funding to expand those. The president had a 70 point immigration plan. This was included in it, Chuck, that expanding, really doubling the detention center capacity, hiring more ICE agents. We don't have the capacity. Those brave men and women at the border who are trying to do their jobs as best they can, this is an issue. And, and if the Democrats are serious, and if a lot of Republicans are serious, they'll come together this year. They won't just talk about this week the Dreamers or just the wall or just catch and release. It's all of the above. And there are ways to repatriate these families back to their home countries expeditiously. But I want to make very clear, because thank you for saying nobody is arguing the kids aren't getting care. A lot of folks are pretending these kids aren't getting care. You have colleagues in your network who are analogizing this to concentration camps and the Nazis. What a disrespect, what an outrageous disrespect to the six million people who perished at, at uh, that time. Uh, all right, I want to go back. I want to uh, move on quickly to tariffs. There's a headline in the Des Moines Register that shows the impact this is having, particularly in farm states. Already, I was feeling at a $624 million hit just on soybean sales alone, perhaps, for Iowa. Um, we're in a full-fledged trade war now with China, Canada, the European Union, Mexico, which may may not be as helpful to us in this border problem because we're beating them up with tariffs. Is the president going to follow through with all these tariffs? Well, respectfully, the president's position is that we lost the trade war a long time ago. And, and you know who lost it? The American workers lost it. If you look at just the statistics alone since he took office, you have th over 300,000 new construction jobs, 300,000 new manufacturing jobs, more jobs created in timber and mining. These are industries that were flat on their back in, in years past and never seeing the kind of growth in those jobs and job security that you see under this president. So when it comes to tariffs, this president has exempted certain countries, certain industries. He's given a pause for a month and then another month. But he thinks that we have been on the losing end of the so-called trade no, I, I know for years. I know we have a four hundred billion dollar deficit with China. You, How is you that acknowledge you're ahead? creating yourself your own political problem now in no, the Midwest. No, I didn't say that. These farmers are very support many of them are very supportive of President Trump because they, they like his policies yeah. when it comes to the tax cuts, the deregulation, the fact that China now is buying beef and poultry and dairy for the first time in about fifteen years. And every time the president is told you can't do that, it'll never happen, what a mistake you'll be making, pulling out of the Paris Accords going over to Singapore and trying to get denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, a moving, to, really keeping the promise of five presidents to move the capital, excuse me, recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and move our U.S. Embassy there. He keeps the promise and people say, don't do it, it'll be a disaster. This will play out over time, but he's tired of the American workers getting screwed. President Trump on Friday said, the real FBI, those guys love me. What does that mean? Who's the real FBI? The rank and file. It's so disturbing to anyone, Chuck. When you read this IG report and you see some of the comments that were being made in, in text messages, um, on September 9th, 
the same day that Hillary Clinton would go on to refer to President Trump's supporters as irredeemable and deplorable, the same day an FBI agent, according to the IG report, referred to Trump's supporters in Iowa, excuse me, Ohio, as, quote, retarded. Are we comfortable with that? Who is that person? Does that person still work at the FBI? Are they still getting government resources? Do they have his top secret Are you comfortable parents? with the fact that the New York FBI office was leaking stuff to Devin Nunes in September of 2016 as well? I mean, against Hillary Clinton. I'm very I mean, what is going on? If, if I understand you guys want to make a, an issue of that. That New York FBI office looks like it was leaking like a sick. Well, I'm very uncomfortable that in, apparently in exchange for some leaks that FBI officials were taking gifts from journalists. And you should be very concerned, too. I'm sure you are, that your people are being offered meals and, and tickets to games and things of real value. Mm -hmm. What were they getting in exchange? A new friend? Or, or someone who would be a source for them. Uh, it's very disconcerting. There are many disconcerting things in this report, and I know people are running around cherry-picking it according to their own political point of view. Yeah. What, I would, what I would recommend, Chuck, is that everybody take the time to really digest 568 pages. That because I agree although with. people say that, oh, the actions weren't biased, the people certainly were biased at the tippy-tippy top. Jim Comey got a hero's welcome for some silly book about leadership, morality, and loyalty. And you've got Rod Rosenstein's memo on May 9, 2017, you have this IG report essentially coming to the same conclusion, which is he was insubordinate and outside the chain of command. And if the president had never uttered the word Russia, everybody would have, uh, in, to Lester Holt, then he would have be on higher ground there. Kelly I Conway, don't. I have to end it there. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks for coming on. Happy Father's Tuesday. Day. Thank you very much, and same to George. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here, and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.